Okay then gang, so currently when we write our variables and assign them values, TypeScript automatically infers the variable type based on the value we give it. But sometimes we might just want to initialize a variable without giving it a value, so then it can't really infer its type and then we could give it any value in the future. But we can get around this by explicitly giving the variable a type. So how do we do that? Well, say for example, I wanted to declare a variable called character and I wanted this to be a string, but I don't know what the value of that string is gonna be yet. Well, I could say that this is gonna be a string by doing colon and string like so. And now we're saying, okay, initialize this variable, but don't give it a value. But in the future, only allow us to give this a value of a string. And I could do the same for numbers or booleans. So for example, I could say let age be a number by saying let age colon number. And same for boolean, let is logged in. And then that is gonna be a boolean, okay? So now we're giving these three things types. And if we hover over one of these things, we can see it's a string. This is a number and this is a Boolean. So now say for example, I wanted to give age a value. Well then if I tried to give it a value of a string like Luigi, it's not gonna let me do this and we get an error. And that's because we've already explicitly given this age variable a type. So we can't do this, but I could say age is equal to some kind of number like 30 and that is fine. Same for is logged in, I couldn't set that equal to something like a number because we already said this should be a boolean, but I could say, oops, it is logged in, not is logged, like that. But I could change it to true or false. So I could say is logged in is now equal to true and that's absolutely fine. Okay, so they're the basic types. That's how we can explicitly define what types are gonna be inside a variable. But what about arrays? They're a little bit more complicated, right? So say for example, I have an array, I'll say let ninjas, and this is gonna be an array. Now, if I want this to be an array of strings, I could say colon and then string square brackets. And now in the future, this can only be an array of strings. So if I say ninjas is now equal to 10 and 23, that's not gonna be allowed because these are not strings, but they could then be something like Yoshi and Mario, that is allowed. Now, sometimes you wanna initialize this to be an empty array to begin with, because then we can use the push method on this. If we didn't have that here, and we didn't initialize it with a value, we couldn't say dot push and then add on a string, because at the minute, it's not actually an empty array and we're not getting an error here, but if I save this now and go to the browser, we get an error here. It says cannot read property push of undefined. And that's because we've not actually initialized this with a value yet of an empty array. We're saying in the future, it should be a string array. And then we're trying to push something onto it, but we've not yet declared that string array. I hope that makes sense. So sometimes it's best to initialize it with an empty array, and then we can only play strings inside that array. So now if I say this, it should work. We don't get an error, okay? Okay, so what if I want to create some kind of mixed array? So I could have strings and numbers in it and maybe booleans as well. Well, for that we could use something that is known as a union type. And a union type is basically our way of saying it could be one of two or one of three types. So say I have an array called mixed and I want this to be an array. We put our type before that in a second. I'll set it equal to an empty array to begin with. But right here, instead of it just being a string array, I also want it to be numbers and booleans that we can store in here as well. Well, how do we do that? We use a union type and to do that, we can open up parentheses and say in here, it could be a string or, and we use a pipe to say or, number, and now we could store strings and numbers inside this thing right here. So I could come down here and say mixed.push and it's gonna be a string, hello, that would be fine, no error. I could say mixed.push and this will be 20 and that would be fine. But if I then say mixed.push and it's gonna be a Boolean, so I could say false, then we should get an error because we've not said this can be a Boolean. But if I now add another pipe on and say 
Boolean right here. This is saying that this array can be any of these three types right here. So these are known as union types. When we declare something like this, and it can be one of several different types, it's known as a union type. So let's just log these to the console to see what it looks like mixed. And we've pushed those three variables to it, save it. And we can see right here, hello, 20 and false. So that all works, awesome. Now we can also use union types on normal variables, not just arrays. So say for example, I create a new variable like a UID and that could be either in string format or number format. Well, I could say this is gonna be a string or a number. Now, when we're using a union type that is not in front of an array, we don't have to use parentheses. You do if it's in front of an array, but you don't if we're just giving a union type to a normal variable like this. Okay, so now UID could be either a string, so I could say one, two, three, that's fine, or UID could be a number, one, two, three, but UID couldn't be something else like a Boolean, that's not gonna work, okay? All right then, so finally, object, how do we explicitly declare a variable as an object? Well, we could just simply say, let ninja1, we'll call this variable, be an object type. And now we could say ninja1 is equal to any kind of object. So I could say an object where there's a name property, and that's going to be Yoshi, and then also an age property, and that's going to be 30. So that's absolutely fine because this is still an object and we're saying that ninja1 must be an object. But we then couldn't say ninja1 is equal to a string, for example. That wouldn't work, all right? And by the way, we could still declare this to be some kind of an array. That would work because an array is actually a kind of object. So that is allowed. But if you wanna be more specific when declaring the type of object, you can be. So I could say down here, for example, let ninja2 be an object, and we can do it explicitly like this. So it's not equal to an object here. We're just declaring the type it should be in the future. And we're saying right here, it should be a type of object where it has a name property, and that should be a string, yeah? And then we have an age property, which should be a number, and maybe also a belt color property, which should be a string. So now we're saying right here, okay, Ninja2 is an object, but it must have these three properties inside it, name, age, and belt, and the types of those should be string, number, and string. So now if I try to say Ninja2 is equal to an object, at the minute, because we don't have these properties, then we're not allowed to do that. It has to have all of these properties with these values. So if I add on name, to be Mario, and then also the age right here to be 20, and then finally the belt color is gonna be black. This now works, we don't get any errors at all, but if I try to add on a fourth property, skills, which is an array, now we get an error and it won't let us do this, okay? So this is how we explicitly type our variables before we give them a value.